Now everyone's making it in film and TV, but we don't really know how. Here we uncover the truth. Welcome to the Your Cinema Podcast. Welcome to the Your Cinema Podcast. Today is the place where we explore the truth about film, TV and theatre and we hear it directly from those who are smashing it in their areas as well. Today we've got an actor who's supremely versatile and building very good ground for his career. He's been in Barbershop Chronicles, acted with the Royal Shakespeare Company, as well as being on your TV screens in Borders uh, on BBC, as well as also featuring in the recently released feature film Gassed Up and has also been announced in the new cast for the critically acclaimed play for black boys we have mohammed mansore what's going on bro i'm very good pierre man i'm very good that that i'm not gonna lie i was hearing you say all of that and in my mind i was just like this i've never been introduced in introduced like that. <laughs> this is this is crazy but thank you for that bro thank you man. do you know what right a lot of people say that and really like my response is usually, and will continue to be, do you know what? I've only said the truth, but with you saying that, right, it is, it, it made me think that like, I've only said the truth, but is it that we sometimes maybe don't realize the magnitude of the work that we've done? Because we're always on the go or we don't want to accept that we've done really good stuff because it might mean that we're leaning towards being big headed. I just, yeah, just open question. Yeah, no, you, you know what? I think it's a very good question. And I, it could be that. I think it's half and half. Sometimes it is you're in the midst of something. So you don't know if it's going to turn out to be whatever it, it is you envision it to be in your mind. So it's like, let me just keep my cards close to my chest, you know, just to, just in case there's that. And then I do think also there is that thing of like, like growing up, my mum was always like, yo, don't, don't show off. Like, don't be a show off. And she's from yeah. Sierra Leone. Well, I'm Sierra Leonean. So I was yeah. born here, but I'm of Sierra Leonean heritage. And my mum always used to say like, there's a, there's a saying that they have in Creole would say, when your yams are white, you should cover them. So like, for me, I think it's that I have those two things in my head. It's like, I just like to cut through, do what I'm doing. And um, mm. and sometimes the work can feel precious. So you don't really want to, I don't know, man, you don't, mm. don't want to jinx it, whatever that means. But I think it is, yeah. is, I think it is good for people to like, to learn to accept compliments and take their flowers mm. as well. Because I say that to my friends, you know, if they're mm. doing something they're, and they're doing it very well, it's like, no, you need to hear this. You need to accept this, that, yeah, I, I need you to, I need you to know that, yeah, you're, you're, you're representing yourself. You're doing very well at the moment. So yeah, hold that. So yeah, man. So thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, thank God. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Only reflecting the truth. And yeah, I, I, I think I get your point, um, which is helping me understand something actually, because it's like, if someone was always reeling off those facts about themselves, mm. we'd get put off by it mm. if they were doing that all the time. So yeah, it makes sense for someone else to say that about you. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. It mm. makes sense. Mm. Um, so like I know that you have been you've been acting. Um, but what's really interesting is that you're really like it's like a lot of your projects are coming out all at once and they're all quite significant, et cetera, which is exciting to see, man. Um, but I want to take it back straight from like a, a earlier point, right? Um, just so people can get more understanding and context about you. And very simply, like, when did you start acting? So I started acting eight years old. Yeah, I started acting in primary school, like mm -hmm. early, early, early. And from like the, the, the beginning, I remember I was watching Fresh Prince of Bel Air, right? I was watching Will Smith. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to my mum going, Oh mum, I wanna be like him, you know? And I think I kept on banging on about it. And um, we were living in Camberwell at the time. We were living in Camberwell, we just moved, and my mum was working a lot. So where I was pestering her, she was like, Okay, cool, what I can do is I can put you in this improv drama class 
once a week on a Wednesday, you go there. But that was also her doing that so that she could work a bit later. And, you know, rather than me being an after school club or after yeah. after school, like, you know, I could, I, I, I'd be there. Like someone, like a cousin or someone would take me from school, take me there. They go mm-hmm. off on their way. And then she'd pick me up from there and take me home. So, yeah, improv classes started there. Um, I loved it. And after a few months, the people that were running the place, so it was DMB, DMB Theatre School in Down in Bromley. Um, after a few months, the people that, the, the, the ladies that run it, Donna and Bonnie, they were like, oh, your son is very good. Like, we have an agency, um, a kid's agency. We'd like to sign him. And, yeah, we, you know, we just, yeah, we'd like to sign him. So at this point, like, I don't know what it means. My mum don't know what it means, but she's just like, okay, if you say he's good, then he's good. Yeah, let's let's do this do this thing. So they signed me. And then from there, I think one of the first jobs that I got was um, the bill. I was young and I did that with Danny Mosley. That's, that's where I met Danny, like, way back in the day when I was a kid. Like, I must have been, like, maybe 10. Yeah, no, no more than 10 years old, like nine, 10 years old. Um, and I was lucky enough to have a few other opportunities, like stage opportunities as well, like mm. some musicals as well. So yeah, it just, the, the ball the, the, the ball was rolling from then. But it's funny because like, even way back then, you're just doing it for the enjoyment. You're not thinking about like character or like, you know, method or this or that. It's just, you know, you enjoy it. Like I came from improv class, so I'm used to just making stuff up on the spot. You're now on set with a camera there. It's kind of like, oh, that's cool. But I'm more, I'm giving it more attention to the actors that I'm working with rather than the camera. You don't even realize that you're getting paid at that time, like, cause you're a kid, do you know what I mean? And yeah. <laughs> it was kind of funny as well. I think my mom, she was like, I think she was, she was happy, of course. But it kind of backfired on her because where she put me in them classes so that she could stay later at work, it's like now she had to leave work earlier to take me to the dishes. You know what I mean? So it kind of, yeah. it was, it was, it was a journey. But yeah, I started, I started at eight years old. I did, um, did that. Um, yeah, so the bill, a, a few episodes of the dumping ground, um, some musicals that like there was a musical called Daddy Cool that was going on in the West End at Shaftesbury mm-hmm. Theatre. Um, Oliver in the West End as well um, and from there like opportunities just kept coming my way um, mm-hmm. and I, I caught the bug from there so yeah left primary school mm-hmm. went to secondary school now and in my mind it's like already it's like I I, I know what I'm going to do when I leave here because I was academically gifted as well like I was in all the top sets at school I was very mm-hmm. smart I was like yeah like you know I was I think I'd, I'd like to say that I, I did well. Yeah. But because I'd been introduced to this thing called acting so young, when it came to GCSEs, I'm not going to lie, I didn't really revise like that because in my mind it's like, I don't need these. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna be an actor. Wow. And, and um, yeah, like, I think everyone that's, that that knows me, all my friends, that like, they've always known that like, from young, I think this is what, this is what I've, this is what he's going to go on to do. And it wasn't a thing of, um, it wasn't a thing of like, it's, it's, like I, it, it's not that I didn't work towards it, I did, but I think it was always just something in my heart or in the back of my mind of like, yeah, this, this, is, this is what's going to happen. And similar to what we were talking about earlier of just trusting that the way certain things have happened, the way certain jobs have come my way and the way certain opportunities have just been laid out for me, I just go, even if I was, even if I did have like a proper stage mum, because my mum wasn't a stage mum. Like, she come to watch all my shows, you know, when they said that you have to pay this much for the costume for the end of year showcase, like, she'd be like, ah, oh, this is this thing again. But, like, she'd do it. Like, she'd pay yeah. for all my classes as well. But, mm-hmm. you know, when it came to, I think the first few jobs that I had, she'd sat, she'd sat there, she'd sit there with me and help me to learn the lines and stuff. But after that, it's kind of like, well, you know, you wanted to do this thing, so however you want to go about it, go about it. Like, you know, you, you, I'm assuming you know what you're doing because I'm paying for all these classes for you, you know? So it was kind of like, I don't really, my, my son's doing this acting thing. He seems to be doing okay. Um, but she weren't like, yeah, you're, I'm giving you extra this classes and extra that classes. Like, I just went and did my thing. And yeah, so I say all of that to say, I feel like even if I did have like a stage mom like that, I, yeah. I don't. I don't know if it would have changed anything. I just feel like. Mm-hmm. I just feel like 
it's like it's it's God really. I I'll, I'll be yeah. so real. And her prayers, my mum's prayers as well, I think, that's kind of put mm-hmm. put me in this stead. And obviously like opportunities being in the right place at the right time and the agency as well. Like there's loads of things that have contributed to to how things have gone up until this point. Um wow. yeah, so and then I went to DMB. I was lucky to get a scholarship there. Mm-hmm. Uh I trained in musical theatre. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, so this is so this is like after secondary school, yeah. Yeah, sixteen. Like I, I oh. was out of the school, finished. Like went straight to DMB. Wow. I was lucky to get a scholarship to go there. Um, so I audition, got a scholarship. It was so that's no fees, right? No fees, no fees, and there were fees, but yeah, I was lucky enough to where like the things that I had to pay for were very, very minimal. Like compared yeah, to yeah, the yeah, yeah. people that that I was training with. Um, mm. And I don't think I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been able to go there otherwise. Like to be honest with you, um, it was the Marvin Hume scholarship that I got. So Marvin Hume from JLS, he used to go to DMB way back in the day. And um, after JLS's success and all of that, he wanted to do something to to give back and to you know to just continue that bond. So yeah, I got he he's the person that paid for my scholarship to to train there. Yeah. What? So have you hit him up? Does he know what's going? That's that's huge. To be honest, I haven't spoken to him in a while. Like, I haven't I haven't touched base with him in a while. But like, I think every so often, if I I think I do need to. To be honest, I've just yeah. But that's after I graduated, the first couple of things that I did, like I think he'd see it and he'd be like, you know, like big up that sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, big up Marvin. Do you know what? Sorry, that stuck out at me, yeah, because so many people love to give back, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, like, I'm sure, like, up-and-coming actors probably, like, DM you and ask you this and da 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 and you probably, like, drop advice on them, whatever, and then keep it moving, yeah? But then imagine, like, 10 years later or something, someone comes back and is like, yo, you see? Like, I'll give you an example. So there was like some Q and A's and stuff that we used to do, right? Uh, especially during lockdown. Mm-hmm. And in one of them, we had Javan, Javan Wade, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he's come on doing the Q and A. And then this actor was like, asked him this question about like, oh, his, his agent's not really getting him work. Mm-hmm. And so he's thinking about dropping him, right? And then Javan was like, it's lockdown. No one's getting any work. Like you, like, especially if you're emerging right now, the fact that you've got an agent is a good thing. And the fact that you are even getting auditions in this climate, because I think it was around January as well. And what he broke down was like, look, around Christmas, everything shuts down. Mm-hmm. January, people are still off. Mm-hmm. So like, if you're getting anything right now, like keep your agent. And I remember thinking, and the guy was like, oh, okay, cool. But it's like, I just imagine like little things like that, that are like second nature or it's like, all right, cool. Well, this is what I think, you know, if you want to take my advice or whatever, they can be some like really pivotal changes and moments in people's lives 100%. that we don't even realize. So then when you said that, I'm like, oh my days. Yeah. Cause the stuff that you're doing now is like, if he played a hand in that, I'm like, Wow. That's a huge thing, you know. It, no, it is. It is like one million percent. It is, and it's it's a uh, it's what you it's it's what we said at the beginning as well. Sometimes you're just like mm. crying through, crying through, crying through, and it's like I'm the kind of person where I because obviously we follow each other on socials. Like he sees, I'm sure that you see, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what I'm up to. So mm. for me, I think the best way for me to like say thank you or whatever is to do what I'm doing now. Of course. It's not like yeah. you're the scholarship and like of this is the face of the earth. Do you know what I mean? It's like, what have you done all that for? So, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, yeah. I'm, I'm doing what, 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 whatever it is he thought he saw, like fulfilling that potential. But, um, wow. yeah. And to that point about Javan as well and giving that advice to that young actor, ah, oh, it's, it's what you say, hindsight, isn't it? It's that like only experience, only like, going through certain things that's that's when you'll be able to sit back and go nah, nah, you're good man but when you're young or when you're when you're black like, first starting out you don't know you don't know yeah. and, and a lot of the people around you might be actors that are in the same position so it's like it's 
and you lot are talking to each other, going, have you got a team? No, oh, what about you? No, oh, but I heard my man got one and da 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 like, We've all been through that. We've all been through that. And I think I'd be remiss to say that even now, like, people mm. still go through that. So yeah. Yeah, it's, that's why it's, it is always good to have someone that has a bit more experience or has been there and done it mm. to just to, to give that advice. Like, that is a blessing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, DNB, so you've come out of secondary school, DNB, um, yeah, like, what what, what happens after for you? So, first and foremost, like, it was musical theatre training, which, oh, true. Yeah, yeah. which is, I didn't actually know that it was uh, musical, <laughs> this is going to sound so mad, but I promise you this is the truth. I didn't know that it was a musical theatre course because from when I was eight to 16, I'd graduated from doing, I saw that there was the, there was the improv classes on the Wednesday. And then after signing to the agency, it was, you know, theatre school on a Saturday, which is nine to 12, acting, singing and dancing every Saturday. And then at the end of the, at the end of the, um, at the end of the year, you have like your summer showcase and whatnot. So I was doing that for years. So I was used yeah. to the acting, singing and dancing part, but I only ever really liked the acting or like, not that I didn't like the others, but like my favorite bit was the acting part. Yeah. And where I was on the agency, I'd done a few musicals, but majority of the jobs that I had were acting jobs. So, and anytime I go into the office, I talk to them about acting, not like musicals and that. So yeah. when they said come to the college, I think it's because at this point they're like my, my they're like my professional family. Like I know everyone in the office. Yeah, like I can yeah. go in and, and, and speak to them. It's like when they like come to the college, in my mind, it's like I didn't even question it. It's like, yeah, like where else am I gonna go? Yeah. At this point, I didn't even know about tra- like traditional drama schools. Like I didn't know that there was like the Radas and the guild halls and uh, all of that, the art said that I didn't realise. The only place I'd re- I'd I'd heard of at that point was Brit School. And Italian yeah. Conti, because I'd, I'd met some of those kids on some of the jobs that I'd done, like the musicals and whatnot. So but I didn't know about all the rest of them. So when they're like, yeah, cool, come, audition for the scholarship, I've got the scholarship. It's like, yeah, cool, I've got a scholarship. No brainer, I'm going here. Yeah. Even in the audition, everyone had come up, come in with their, so we had to do like a ballet. Now, in yeah. hindsight, now I think about it, and I've got all the signs were there. How could you? <laughs> Like we had to do like a ballet audition and everyone's yeah. gone in there wearing their unitards and yeah. whatnot. Like I've gone there in like shorts and like I'd rolled my socks underneath my 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 feet. So it's like, it's like my socks are half one half. So my heels on the floor, but like my heels oh. are, are covered in it. So, but you know, I'm just doing, I'm doing, um, so I'm, I'm doing the auditions like that. Cause it's, it's like, I hadn't done as much as I did the acting the singing and the dancing on the Saturday, I didn't do any of the, like, the, the ballet and I hadn't really dabbled into oh, that. Oh, so I've done the auditions now, I've got the thing, I'm, I'm, I'm at school, I'm at college and after the first week, I'm saying to some of my friends, I'm like, why are we doing so much dancing? Like, why are we doing so much singing? Like, how come we're not doing, like, how come the acting, like we're doing more dancing and singing than acting and they're like, well, it's kind of, you know, it's musical theatre. I'm like, so what, is it always going to be like this? And they were like, yeah, and I was like, oh, all right, cool. And well, I'm here now anyway. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm wow. here. Like, it wasn't a thing of, like, I didn't appreciate it. It was just, the, oh, okay, well, this is a bit different. But I'm coming from being in school and, you know, only acting on the, only, like, doing training on the weekends to now yeah. I'm in class every single day, like, ballet, yeah. like, two hours every morning. Like. So for me, it was like, this is it. This is... I'm, I'm going to take everything that I can get and, wow. and, and yeah, man, just soak it all up, which I did. I graduated in 2016 from DMB. Mm-hmm. Um, and everything that they taught me in that college has served me right up until today in my career. I'll be, wow. so, I'll be so honest. Um, so after that, I signed with an agent mm-hmm. um, and I was auditioning for stuff and there was a job that I was offered, but, I was also, I'd also auditioned for National Youth Theatre's rep company at the same time. Okay. Um, so I've gone into the audition for National Youth Theatre's rep company and, you know, like, thank God they came back. They was like, yeah, we'd love you to, we'd love you to, to join the rep company. Mm. But I think they'd heard about 
they'd heard about like the opportunity that, that I was offered and they was like at the time they was like to be honest with you I feel as though because it was a musical yeah it was a musical and they were like in terms of where you are right now we think it would better serve you to come and do like to train to continue training mm-hmm. rather than doing um rather than doing a job rather than doing this specific job and it was mm-hmm. Wendy Spawn who was part of the casting team at the national at the time she mm-hmm. was a person that was like to me in my professional opinion I think this will serve you way more than doing that mm-hmm. and on top of that rep was straight like crash course like drama theatrical training yeah which is, which is what I was kind of in my mind it's like this is really what I want to delve into more yeah. so yeah we did I think it was six weeks of that like, training learning different techniques so that's like animal studies we're learning about um like Meisner we're learning about Stanislavski we're learning about like, all, all these different things in the first six weeks we're learning yeah. about we're going to the zoo pick an animal then for the week you have to like work on that animal and then at the end of the week there are people that come in and watch and like we just do a performance and everyone's doing you know their animal but you don't say what your animal is like you just have a monologue that you deliver in the style of your animal and I was a penguin um wow. I don't know why I saw the penguins at the zoo I was like yeah like I'm not gonna be a penguin um and did you have to write the monologue did we have to write it I think I did I think we did you know I think we did yeah, yeah. we did we did we did it didn't have to be too because there's there was uh, I think there's is it nine of us in the group okay well yeah it didn't have to be too long but yeah, yeah. we had to pen the monologue ourselves and after the showing, I remember um, a director that was associated with National Youth Theatre came up to me and was like, oh, I really liked what you did. I could see that he was a, a penguin. And I was, like, I was gassed. I was like, oh, thank you, man. <laughs> not in the way of like, you know, there's the physicality of it, but then it's, all, like, you know, like he, he got yeah. it. And I was like, all right, cool. I feel like I'm learning something. So yeah, train yes. for six weeks. And then we rehearse for six weeks we have two different three different shows that we put on we rehearsed two of them first so we did Jekyll and Hyde Mm -hmm. um, which was directed by Roy Alexander Wise and written by Evan Placey and then we did Othello with Frantic Assembly directed by Simon Pittman Um, and then we did uh, we did what did we do I know Thomas Bailey he was like the um Brian Forbes winner for that year. He directed us. We did like a Virginia Woolf play. Did a Virginia Woolf play, I believe. I've forgotten the name of it. But yeah, we did those three. And then we, yeah, we went, we then have six weeks at the Ambassadors where we perform these shows and rep. And yeah, after that, I was lucky enough to get another agent. And yeah, I'd say from there, that's kind of when it was like the training is kind of not finished because, you know, you still always have to train. Like even doing tapes for me is like training in a way. Yeah. But yeah, I think from there is kind of when things started to move a little bit. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to take it back. When you finished at DMB, Mm. what's the reason that you switched agents? Because like the school had an agency as well, right? So. Yeah. So DMB had, it's it's like a, a predominantly a children's agency. Oh, yeah, okay. On the agency as well. Yeah. But it's predominantly a kid's agency. Okay. Um, when I say kids, I'd say like kids to like yeah. young adults. And obviously yeah. because they've been around so long, they have adults there. So like, yeah, there, there mm-hmm. are like performers, mm-hmm. like actors that have graduated from the college and are on their books and are working yeah. very, very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just felt like I've been there for so long that I need to, it's time for me to, it's time for me to switch, you know, to, to, to see what's out there. So yeah, I signed with an agent then. Yeah. And then when I was offered National Youth Theatre's rep company, that agent yeah. was upset that I didn't go, I didn't take the job that I, like, that I wanted at first. Um, so they were like, all right, cool. Well, if you're going to do this rep thing, then cool. Like, whatever, that's fine. I was still on their books, but obviously because I was training for the next nine months, they couldn't send me to any audition. So, True. and at the end of it, there was another agent who, um, she's retired now. My, 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 the agent that signed me to the agency I'm at now. Yeah. She was like, yo, I'd really, I think, I think that we could do good stuff together. And, um, you know, like, yeah, she was, I think our end of year showcase, she came to, she came to watch and 
and we had a chat and she was like yeah i'd like to I'd like to sign you and at that point everything that i'd gotten up until that point with the agent beforehand was like musical theater stuff and it's like as much as i i do i'm, I'm i'll admit i like a musical like there's some actors that don't like it and i hear it but when you train in musical theater for three years you learn to appreciate it do you know what i mean you know, so but i knew that there's other things that i wanted to do and i felt as yeah. though um, this the uh, the new agent was a lot more could could facilitate that for me. Yeah, um, but, I hear yeah, you. That's how I ended up with the agent that I'm at now, off the back of National Youth Theatre's rare company. Wow. Yeah, so man. then, you've done. I was gonna say three years and nine months of training, but then you were ch- like you've been training for years and years. You've so then, like but yeah. yeah. I that, do you know what? That's a beautiful thing to be able to say, mm. you know, um, because well, one thing that I find very interesting is that a lot of people from our backgrounds, right, like it's difficult to fully pursue a creative career mm-hmm. just because of the realities of life. Mm-hmm. Like parents may be like, you know, coming over to this country and being like the first wave of 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 immigrants. So yeah. then it's like, look, we just need to make sure everything's stable. Yeah. So and we know how hard we've worked. So we would want you to, you know, not yeah. rock the boat for yourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some some parents are false women, some aren't, but yeah. it's like, look, the creative thing, we we don't even understand this. Yeah. yeah. Right? So I love the fact that you have even been able to see, look, it didn't even feel like it. That means that you've been playing for it for like years. Yeah. yeah. Which is, that is, yeah, that's such a blessing, man. It, 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 um, it is. And I think when I think about it, it kind of informs the way that I work like now, the way that really? I always work now. I think that it is very instinctual the way that I like to approach things. Okay. Because there's definitely technical elements and you have to do mm. more research and you have to do your homework. And, but when it comes down to you in the room, you've got your script like and your lines and you're delivering them, there's techniques like, you know, your actioning and, you know, your lobbing techniques. There's all of that. But for me, it just comes down. And all of those things can help you to get somewhere. But if it doesn't feel... If it doesn't, if you don't feel it, then it's not, it's, it's not, it's not that. It, like, it just, it comes from, it comes from here. And I'm, I think I'm learning to, I think that's a skill that you, you, you have to kind of like the whole exercise and, and the whole, you know, mm-hmm. so I'm learning to, to listen to that. But I think that comes from the fact that when I was younger, it was improv and it was playing and it was like, off the cuff and it was you're, you are just you're saying there's no script you're just saying whatever you feel to say in the moment and it feels true to you in the moment and it feel it feels correct you know so that that's something that I feel like has has has, has followed me that like, has continued to has carried me all this way to be honest but then the reason why I remember I, I said that like my training at DMB helped me mm. and has also carried me that the musical theatre training is like you said Barbershop Chronicles at the beginning. That job, I auditioned for it before. Like I, I, before I got the job, I had auditioned for it. And mm. I didn't get it. I auditioned, mm. I auditioned for a different role in the play. Um, I didn't get it. So months have gone by and my agent calls me. She's like, oh, Barbershop want to see you again, but they want to see you for a different role this time. I'm like, oh, okay, but haven't they started rehearsal? She was like, yeah, they at this point they'd started rehearsals but something had happened and someone wasn't able to do it so they, they needed someone to fill in but they were like two weeks in to their rehearsal process so I've gone in I've done the audition um, I've gone in one day Stella Odenlami who was the associate director big up Stella um, I've auditioned for Stella and she's like yep yeah, really good uh, you've got your recall tomorrow with the director Bijan Shabani so I've gone in the next day um, done the audition and I've gone to this audition like I have I had work after I was working at like a mini golf place the junkyard mm-hmm. golf in Shoreditch at the time so I had like my work uniform in my bag everything so I've gone in done it 
and ended with this shit. Like Bijan sitting there, and he's like, mm, yeah, that was that was really good. Um, so um, we're rehearsing next door. Do you wanna do you wanna join? Do you wanna? How, how do you feel about joining the production? Like we go to we go to America next week. Would you do you wanna do that? And I'm sitting there going, this guy's asking me this question a bit too calm. Like, I don't know if you're joking, if you're being serious. I'm like, be serious. He's like, yeah, no, no, no we're just we're literally next door. So, you know, just, if you've got any phone calls you need to make, I suggest you make them now and you can join us. So I'm like, yeah, no, definitely. So I go outside, I call my mum. Mum, I booked it. And then I call my workplace. And I say, yo, I know I'm meant to be starting working an hour and a bit, but yeah, you look you're not seeing me today mate. I'm sorry oh, <laughs> I'm sorry wow. yeah I went next door and um, the whole point of that is the fact that they were two weeks in so I had like a maybe 10 days to, to, to learn to get myself up to speed with what they were doing um, and for me that training that the 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 training of, because they, it, you know, barbershop, it had a lot of movement incorporated and dance and truth and that. So the fact that I had been doing dance for the, for a good three years meant that I was able to pick all of that up and it didn't like throw me, it didn't phase me. It was, I took it in my stride and I was then able to just focus on, you know, like, yeah, I was, I was able to, I was able to like slot in basically. And, yeah, yeah, straight. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. So what was what was Barbershop Chronicles like for you? Because it's it's an iconic play. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's different. I can't, it's different. It was a revelation. It was a revelation. I'd say that. Like mm. you can work with guys that uh, it's a group of twelve black men first and foremost. Mm. Um, I think that's the first time I'd met an actor. I'd met an older actor of Sierra Leonean heritage. And that was like, yo, like you're this, this is like you're like my, like my dad's generation, like or even even older, like and you're you've been doing this for years. I didn't realize. I didn't. If you were to ask me what, what Sierra Leonean actors do you like, the only person I could really say was Idris Elba at that point. And when you're young, like he's so far out of reach that it's like one day I, m- I might get there one day. Mm-hmm. But then you join a production where. One of the elder statesmen is Sierra Leonean and they're a fantastic actor. And it's like, yeah, I think it just, it, 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 it made me go, okay, one, I can be myself at work. Do you know what I mean? Two, it's yes. a story that speaks. I'm Sierra Leonean, but like, they talk about, they go to Nigeria, they go to Ghana, they go to Zimbabwe, they go to Uganda. Like they, we're talking about the diaspora so I can relate. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was just a fun show, man. And it was just, it was just like, okay, I didn't realize that work could be like this. That's that's what that was. That's what that was. Um, wow. Yeah, and just watch, getting to watch people work, like just getting to how people, how people access their characters. But I think most importantly was that the experiences, like I'm learning from. You've got guys that have been doing this for 20, 30 years. And then when mm. on your next job, if you ever work with someone, you know, make sure you ask for parity. That means that you're going to be getting the same pay as like a your co your coworker or someone. Even if that person is of a higher standing to you, then you can, you know, if you ask for that, it should level things out a little bit. They're just giving you game like that, you know. And it's 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 yeah, it, it felt like a brotherhood. To be honest with you, that's what it felt like. Mm. It, it felt like more than just a job. So that's. That's a privilege because you don't get that on every every contract that you yeah that you do you know what I mean so yeah wow yeah. no that's amazing that's yeah. amazing so right like in in the midst of like your journey up until up until this point around like barbershop chronicles right it sounds like things have been you know, fairly straightforward in terms of training, cool. All right, I've done another acting course. That's another string to my bow. Okay, cool. I've got this pivotal, iconic show, which you probably, you don't know at the time, but it's like, okay, cool. This is, this is cool. And then it comes out and it's, and and it's done really well. Um, But what, what was like some of the rigor or challenges like in the midst of, of, of the journey? Mm. (sighs) 
challenges, the challenges. There's many, like, there's mm. many. I think, as we were saying before, on the outside looking in, things can look straightforward, but yeah. of all the things that I have auditioned for and like, of all the jobs that I have done, there's so many that I went up for and I didn't get naturally. It's the nature mm. of our industry. Mm. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Also, you do have to look at yourself like you do have to get to know yourself on a deeper level. Like if you're going to be playing characters, if you're going to be playing people, you know, you need to, you are your base. Like you're the conduit through, through which these characters of these people are allowed to like live, breathe, speak, like, you know, put them out to the world. So if the base isn't settled, mm. you don't know what your morals are. If you don't know what your not, you know, if you don't know what your, what your, um, Let's just say like your manifesto to yourself. Like this is what yeah. this is where I want to go. These are the things that I stand by. If you don't have that, then I think it's easy to get lost. So I think mm. I'm blessed that, as I've said, just outside of acting, like my friends, like the, the, my brethren that I've grown up with, they most definitely help me to just feel grounded because it's like they're, they're not seeing it like oh like acting like it's a respect thing but it's like we see Mo as Mo like we have a yeah. you know we know where we're coming from we know what our morals are sort of thing um, yeah so I think yeah that that is something you have to get to grips with early on especially when you're when you're when you're mixing with different people at the beginning that are coming from different backgrounds and and stuff like that you know it's like a it's it's understanding that people are different to you and mm -hmm. respecting that but also understanding who you are as well I think Balance as well. One of the the rigmaroles or the 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 challenges or like the rigmarole is, you can get to a point sometimes where it's like work, 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 acting, 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 auditions, auditions. Like, oh, it's my friend's birthday today, but I'm not going because I've got a self tape to do, or it's yeah. you know this family function, but I'm not going because this thing's just come on and it's it's a Netflix thing and it's BBC or whatever and it could change. It's like, come on, man. When all of this is like done and and forgotten about. Who's going to be there? Your family, pardon me, your family, your friends, and also discipline. Discipline as well, because when you do leave an institution or an organization mm. and, you know, you, your timetable, you don't have a timetable anymore, it's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Like, what? You, if you're not dancing, like, for how many hours a day? Five days a week, sometimes six, depending on what's going on. Like your fitness, how are you gonna keep that up? Like your nutrition, how are you what are you gonna do about that as as you get older? It's like all of these things where you go, you really you really have to start to organize yourself in a way where it benefits it. One, it helps you as a person, but two, mm. it benefits the work. Um, because if a role comes in where you need to you need to play a sports person, you need to play a footballer, or you need to play like a a boxer. Mm. Like, we have to prepare for that we've heard stories of actors being like yeah I've got a PT and this and that and like you know if you're not there yet where you mm. can't afford to get the PT or production paying for your one then what are you gonna you need to be able to make that happen you know yeah, you want it to be an actor so this is it acting it transform is part of it so I think it's it's that it's, it's all these things man I think it's just being self-sufficient as well money learning how to handle your finances. Um, and also when you do get certain rejections, like when you have, when you do have your heart set on certain jobs and you do get the no, mm. you, can't, you can be upset, but I think... It well, can't eat you up kind it of thing. Eat you up. And it's... I've learned that if I didn't get it, it weren't for me. It, it weren't for me. As much as I may have wanted it, it, it wasn't it wasn't for me and then on top of that there's some jobs that I have done where you know on the CV it looks fantastic but then the experience of being there it's like the complete opposite it's that like if only if I knew it was going to be like this would I have done it nah probably not I've learned it's definitely taught me something but yeah this isn't what I thought this was going to be so um... Could you, um, could you, that's a really interesting point, mm. right? Um, because Purcell Ascot has touched on this in the past, mm. right? Where, like, some 
like his preference or in terms of productions are like more like grassroots, mm-hmm. like shorts and stuff like that because of the camaraderie that you tend to have. Mm-hmm. But then on like a lot of like big shows, I guess obviously depending on the production, you can feel like a cog in a wheel yeah. and that it's like, all right, cool. You, like you're just a tool kind of thing. What sort of tips could you give or examples of things that may not have been that great without obviously going into the details of what the productions are, etc. To just give an example of like, okay, you know what? These are some things that I have not found great on, on set. I think, Cool. I'd say different people work in different ways, right? So one of the first plays that I did um, out of rep, I was up in, I was up north, I was working up north, and it was a, it, it was a, it was a small role that I had in it. So I liked that because I was able to watch what was going on in the room, mm-hmm. and it was a play that dealt with a lot of mental health issues. So I think it was, I think that was the first time that I'd seen an actor like sit in a rehearsal room and the director goes, oh, what do you think about this? Or what, what, what's your thoughts on this bit? And the actor was like, I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. And I was like, that's crazy. I, I didn't even know he was allowed to say that. I was like, well, you can say that. And it's, it's, it's the fact that when she said, I don't know, the director was like, yeah, cool. When you figure it out, let me know. Or just, yeah, take your time. But in that production, one of the, the lead actor, I'm not sure what happened to it. I don't know what he was what was going on outside of, you know, but he, mm. he didn't make it to the end, basically. Mm. Like, he didn't, mm. something happened. And I think there was a show, there was a day we had a two show day. We've done the matinee. Mm. After the matinee performance, this guy's like, we've come off stage. We're going to our dressing rooms. He didn't come out for the bar firstly in the matinee. And I was like, that's a bit weird. But the performance up until that point, we could kind of sense this, there's something not right with him. Like he's, something's happening. Mm-hmm. Didn't come out for the bar. By the time we've done the bar, gone off stage, we see him with his stuff, like walking out of the theater. And that's the last time we saw him, he didn't come back. So they had to cancel the evening show. One of the other actors had to, you know, they had to rejig stuff. One of the other actors stepped into his role, went on with the book for the rest of the run. But for me, I think his way of working was kind of, you could say, like method in a way. And I don't think it, I just don't, I think if that's the case, like understand how when to how to do that and when to rein it in or like, you know, read the room a bit. Um, and I was just lucky that I was just lucky that I just know how to not I didn't have to interact with a guy that much you know I got you I, you know what I mean I didn't have to I didn't have to like yeah like a lot of my scenes like I had scenes with him but yeah, the, scenes yeah, that, yeah. the scenes that I had with him I don't know if it's just me being like where I'm from it's like certain offers would be made in the room and I'd be like I wouldn't say anything but I remember there was one time the director said to him I'm not sure if you doing that would be wise. Like if you, like, I'm not sure Mo would be very happy with that. And I'm just so happy that the guy could just see the look on my face of like, nah, you're not, this is crazy, bro. Like you would, I understand what you're trying to do here, but you don't, you don't have to do that, you know? And I think that's also when I learned about, you need to know yourself because I don't know what it was about the role that triggered him, but yeah, it, it was obviously, it brought up some stuff, you know, and it was, it was sad actually, to be honest, like it was, it was sad. Um, so that, that was a time, just how p- different people's processes can, can clash. I think on set, there's certain things you can't learn through training. There's certain things you just have to learn on the job. Um, and with certain jobs, I, I haven't really done a, like a, like a massive, like, I, I don't know to, like a, a massive production like that. The like mm. was was big. It was big. There was loads of people mm. on set, but we had the boys and we were we were a tight knit group. So we always 
you know, if there was if anyone had a problem or whatever, like the guys, we, it's all for one, one for all sort of thing, you know. Yeah. But on set, I just think it's 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 like we all like a cheeseburger, or some people like cheeseburgers, but it's like you're now going into the factory to see how the cheeseburger is made, and it's not as glamorous as what the cheeseburger looks like at the end of the at the end of it but that's how it's made isn't it like yeah like it hate it or love it that's how it's made so it's like you kind of have to you have to adjust in a way i feel yeah. it's a thing of feeling uncomfortable then mm. you know you just have to hopefully there's people there that you can speak to and like for instance like hester on Gaston, mm. like one of the best producers that I've ever worked with, one of the nicest people that I've ever like met as well. Mm. We're lucky that we had someone like Hester at the helm of Gaston, so we could always, if there was any problem, you know that you go to her and she does, she always listen to, she always listen to you, you know. But I think mm. advice, I'd say the work, man. Try and try and do the work, and but if you if it's like a if you do, yeah, use your voice, innit? You have a voice for a reason. You do. You have a voice for a reason. For me personally, um, I'm just lucky that I haven't been in situations like that. But friends that have been in situations like that in the past, yeah, yeah, they they, they know who to talk to. They'll go and speak to the producer and be like, I don't like this for X, Y, and Z reason. Contractually, look through your contract. If there's certain, you know, not understand what you're getting involved with, what, what you're getting into, and, or just ask people that have been in those situations before. Or have, have have more experience than you on set, and they'll be able to point you in the right direction. But nine times out of ten, if something doesn't feel right, if your instinct is kicking up, saying, "Yo, like this, there's something going on here," I'd say listen to it. I'd say I'd say listen to it. Yeah. I love that. Was that. kind of that was kind of difficult to answer with. But do you know what I mean? But I, I hope I was able to. to tell nah, nah, nah. You did. You did. You yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. You handled that well, and I think. Yeah, it's really, it's really helpful. Even like what you said about the actor saying she hadn't figured it out yet. Mm. That's like, because a lot of the times people are so like, they're so eager and hungry to work that it's like they want to please mm -hmm. or they want to just call. I've, I've done everything. I've read the lines. I No, I know where it's like to... to to almost say that you aren't where you, you think the director wants you to be is like, oh, I'm not good enough. Da, 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 da. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's a great eye opener that you um, yeah, that you shared. Yeah. She that because at the end of the day, then when you if you you make it about you, if you start to think like that, that I need to please, mm -hmm. I need to, oh, that you know. I've learned the lines and I need to act like I know what I'm doing. Then it's not about the character, it's about you, your self-esteem and your ego and how you're perceived in that room at that moment in time. Whereas if it's really about the work or the character or the story, then you'll be honest and be like, I'm not sure of what's going on here. Or we've rehearsed the scene this way, but after running it a couple of times, something's not working for me. I don't know what I don't know what it is, but can we revisit it? And yeah, there might be people in the room that go, oh, come on, man. But mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, if you're working with people that, that view work the same way, they'll understand and they'll be like, all right, then let's go back to it. So I think, yeah, mm -hmm. you kind of have to, it's difficult, but you have to try and take yourself out of it. And like your ego, all of that, take all of that out of it and just, just be honest about the work that, that you're doing. And if you don't know, it's better to not know than to, than to pretend like you know. You know what I mean? There's, there's yes. a million things that can come from not knowing. There's so many like discoveries that can be made. There's so many things that you can explore from not knowing together mm. as a team rather than, yeah, I don't know, but I'm acting like I do know because then it's just, you, you're not helping anyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So, gassed up, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to me. What was that? What was that like? For you, was that was that your first feature film as well? Uh, as as an adult, yeah, yeah, okay, 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 as okay, an adult, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, man, what was that like? You know, Amazon, like yeah, man. That that was guess what was crazy. Like filming that was mad. It was so mad because really? it was down the road from where I grew up in Campbell. I used to live on in on um Brandon Estate, so we filmed it at 
Camberwell, the old magistrate's court. So it's like, I don't know why, just having to go to set every day, knowing that I lived like a stone's throw, I used to live a stone's throw away from there. That was like a, it was just like a nice feeling. It felt like coming home a bit. Like a full circle moment. Like a full circle moment, yeah. It's just, it, it made me feel proper nostalgic at work, man. But I loved it. The guys as well, like just the team, the guys, like everything, everything about it was, was, um, it was just different. Where like we had to learn how to ride motorbikes. Like, I had to go get our CBT licenses. Some of the scenes that we had to film, like where where I don't know if people have seen it at this point, but you know, like some of the like robbery scenes and this and that, and how we filmed those. Like it, it was it was different. But I think at, at, at the crux of it, at the nucleus of it, it was the fact that on screen you see all of these group of boys they have they have a relationship right and they go through their trials and tribulations and that's that's what that's what the film's about obviously starring Stephen Odebola and like Taz Skylar Craig Middleberg Tobias Jawe myself Mohamed Mansouri like, like we're, the, we're the group of guys that go through it but being led by Stephen you see what his character's going through it's there was so much that we just didn't have to in that audition when I met everyone, yeah, it just felt like yeah, this feels this feels correct, this feels correct, and then yeah, like the 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 challenges of filming some of those back scenes, some of those robbery scenes, some of those emotional parts, like every day was different. Every day was like so uh -huh. so like it was just different. Like yeah yeah, I, what was it like? It was because there's so much that happens in that film. <laughs> it was it was fun it was also it was it was fun it was definitely challenging mm. but i think it was um yeah it, it was how oh, can i have I, I, fun it was challenging and it was just yeah it felt right man it felt right. It felt right. That's I, I don't know. There's no other words that I can feel like feel feel like that I can think of to describe it. But, I love that. You, you you know, like when you're saying like it felt right. Mm. One thing that is like ringing through as 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 you're speaking is that there's a and maybe it stems from like improv, right? There's this aspect of because you know, like acting is. Is Heather Bassin, she's like, you know, it's about the truth, isn't it? Mm. So you can learn lines and have all the techniques in the world, but if it's not truthful, it means nothing. And a part of the truth is just it's it's you can't describe it, like you just feel it. Mm. And and more time the truth is revealed when it doesn't feel truthful. Yeah, because as we're speaking now, there's we're not feeling like oh no, nah, the conversations or like what are we talking about? Like it's just it's just because it's truthful. Mm -hmm. So for you to say, especially like the um the topic is something very real and relatable, especially to not like our community, but it's like it's not like a, a high concept fantasy or something like that. It's Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, so for it to feel right is so important for the authenticity that we've all seen in it. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. I, I, I get exactly what you're saying. It's not too, the story is not too far removed from where we are at, where we have that like, come from. Like it's, you know, it's yeah. not, it's not foreign. It's not foreign. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, 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 I yeah. Even yeah. the characters as well. Like, so I play cabs in the film. Does delivery. He's like a he's like a delivery driver. He's got mm. a young baby on the way. He's got his missus that he's looking after, and he needs he needs a bit of. He, he's looking for something on the side to help sustain himself and his family, you know. Sure. And I think I just I like to break things down as simply as possible when I'm when I'm when, I, when I'm working, and I think cool. You have your. You have your family that you need to provide for. That's your why. Mm. 
your ways and means, like this opportunity has come your way, working with like Dubs, who's played by Taz. Mm. That's your how. That's how you're going to do it. Mm. And then, it, you obviously you have the script, you have what happens and it's like, now it's just down to filling in the blanks for the, for the rest of it and because everyone played their, like everyone played their positions so well, mm. it just made what I had to do even easier. Yes. You know straight. what I mean? It's like, yeah. cool, I, I get I get what I'm doing here. Like, I get what position I'm playing here because everyone is playing their position. It's like, if you've got every man on the pitch, you could just, they're, 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 I don't really watch football like that, I'll be honest. So if I butcher the <laughs> position, please, if you've got, you got, the, you got your, your midfielder, you got your yeah. wingers, you got your defenders, and, you know, yeah. and you've got one more man that's on the pitch and it's like, bro, everyone is in their position, bro. Like, Go up top. That's where we need yes. someone now. You know, it's like yeah. you know that's what you gotta you know that's what you, you gotta do. So Straight. yeah, yeah. And just it's an Amazon film, but it's an independent film at the same time. So that came with the challenges as well in terms of like when you're trying to work on the fly, certain locations that we might have been on location and all of a sudden we can't shoot in this location anymore. So we've got to change it. And we the, like obviously the crew they were on they were on job but us yeah. the boys as well when that happens it's like you might not have as much time to execute that scene as you thought you would before so you've got to be on your P's and Q's you need to know what it is that you're doing and when it came down to the wire everyone stepped up and everyone supported each other to deliver but um, mm. yeah I think the reason why I think it was why I knew the filming was going to be fine is because the audition process like we had we had, I think it was two rounds. I had the first audition process, like the first audition, no tape, did a soft tape, sent it off, then I had a recall. Um, and that's when I met all the boys that I was going to be working with. I met them that first recall audition. Yeah. So we've done it and like, we've done the scenes. Stevie was in there as well, some improv as well. And it was just like, it felt, you know what I say about, it didn't feel like I was training when I was young. Yeah. It, that same feeling because you're doing improv so it's like we're in the room we're just flowing and it's like I remember leaving there thinking I'm not going to lie that was kind of fun like it didn't feel like an audition it just it felt it just felt like you know felt like a, a cheeky a cheeky improv cheeky 30 minute improv with people that you don't know and it's like you're on your way but seeing what everyone brought to it from then um, and how that translated onto set was different and even working with Taz who wrote some of it as well, he, he like co-wrote the film as well. Having him on set helped because if there's certain things that we're, we're like, yo, Taz, like, I'm not sure if this is as true or I'm not sure if I would say this or I'm not sure if this Yeah. Would then we was able to collaborate and, 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 get it, and get it done, man. So, yeah. Big up George and Ponsa, our director, for, for leading us, the team, like everyone, I think it was, um, yeah, man, it was, a, it, it was, it was a proper mixed bag. Like no day was the same, but that's what I love. I love, I love that. I love that, man. You know, now for black boys, now I did not get a chance to watch it. Um, and when I did want to go and see it, um, it was too late basically. Uh, and it's come back. Yeah, it's back. It's back. This this play has, you know, it's from what I've heard and seen and the way it's regarded is so, so, so important. How did I wanna know, right? So the the, the like just to let everyone know you are in this play, yeah. which is big. Um how does that feel for you? It feels like a it feels like a responsibility. Interesting. It feels like a big responsibility. Um, it feels like a blessing, and it was another. It was a situation where it was. It was like, yeah. Uh, this is this is come. This is audition came around like. This has come my way. It's like, all right, God, I'm going to do this thing. And just help me to, that. Like, just shepherd me in this. Like, mm. shepherd me in this. Isn't it? I think I saw it the first time. I saw it twice, mm. actually. 
took my little brother to go and watch it with me the second time around. Mm. And um, yeah, I just think with what the play talks about, the characters that you have in it, the story that, that Ryan's written, um, and what it's based on as well. Like it's, the play is based on, and I'm going to make sure that I get this correct. So let me... <laughs> Because we need to now nah, seriously, seriously, seriously. Go for it. Need to, I need to make it. sure that that you know that we get this correct. So there we go. So the play is based on for black boys who have considered suicide when the hue gets too heavy. Mm. For coloured girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Yeah, by Tazake mm. Shange. I'm sorry if I butchered the name. But I had to make sure I, could, I I get that in there. And we're talking, you're talking about the experiences of of six uniquely different black boys. They're in therapy. Um, they're all in therapy for different reasons. But obviously, the title explains it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they told their story. And by the end of the play, they get to a point where they're able to, um, like, they they allow their imaginations to travel to places that are darker than their perceived reality. And that is the thing that allows that 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 encourages them to move forward, but in their power rather than in the the judgment, the fear, the embarrassment, the pain, the hurt of what they have been through, and the hurt of what society has kind of put onto them. Um, and I think when you're doing a play like that, it is big. It is it is a massive responsibility because even if you yourself haven't been through something like that, I'm sure that we all know someone that has. Yeah, do something like straight. That, you know, and I think the reason why the play was so impactful is because there's some plays that you watch. There, there's some plays that are put on, and when you go and watch it, you see loads of actors there, like people of the industry there. But I think this play is you go and watch it, and one you see have a lot of black people, some black people, a lot of them that haven't been to the theater before, or they may not be like regular theater goers like that. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Like a lot of young black boys, like like my brother as well. I've taken my brother to the theater. Like I, I drag him, drag him along with me when I can. But yeah. it's like it's it's a for a young black boy that hasn't been to the theater before to to go and watch something like that, and hopefully see yourself represented represented on stage. Mm-hmm. And even deeper than that, to 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 relate to the experiences of some of the characters on stage, I think that it allows people to go, okay, so I'm not by myself in this. So if I am feeling this way, if I have been through certain experiences, if, if I don't have that support, if I haven't had the support, this thing, this play, this story is showing me that um, it's not just me because nine times out of 10, we all go through things where we go, oh, that's embarrassing. I'm not telling no one about that. Straight. You a friend about it years down the line and then they go, the same thing happened to me, bro. You know? And I think if this play is the start of the journey for someone to get to the start of someone's like healing journey or like their journey of just like self, self, um, just their journey of self, getting to know themselves or getting to re- rebuild themselves, I think it's a beautiful and it's a powerful thing. It's a beautiful and it's a powerful thing. I, I know that some people... um have the resources to go to therapy and, and it's funny I say that because the characters are in therapy in the play but for people that for people that aren't and they so happen to come to the theatre and see this I think that it's um, yeah man it can it, I feel like it can be life changing I feel like it can oh that's amazing yeah. man I love that I love that I love that um, in terms of like what what was the audition process like for this play it was a bit wild, you know. It was a bit wild because when I, so I wasn't in the country. When I got, I, I had to self tape for it at first, but I wasn't in the country mm. at the time of the self tape. Um, I was doing another project, so it's come through, and I've I've done it, and they were asking for a, a, a speech of one of the characters, and also like some singing as well. So I was like, all right, cool, I can do this sent that off and then my agents come back it's that like they want to see you in the room but they want to see you for a different character i'm like all right cool no problem i've gone into the room 
And Ryan, the director, he's very... Ryan's very straightforward. He's straight down the line. So when I've gone into the room, he's like, all right, cool. Do you understand what we're doing here? And I had to say to him, like, Ryan, I've seen the play twice. Of course I understand what we're doing here. Like, yeah. And, you know, it's like, we got into it, did the scene. And I'm not going to lie, when I left, I was like, I weren't too sure in terms of what I had done in that room. I weren't too, I weren't too sure. And I don't know if that's because... I'd seen the play before and, um, you know, it's like, because of like, the speech or the, the, the text, it's like, I know how it felt. I know how it felt to watch it. And I don't think it helped me in that moment because I'd, I'd you know, I'd seen it, you know? So it's like, yeah. not that I'm trying to emulate what Aruna had, Aruna Jalo, who was the actor that played, I played Obsidian in the play, Aruna played Obsidian before. It's not that I was trying to emulate what Arena had done, but it's like one that's my like it's my good friend, and two it's uh I don't know, man. I just think it was. I'm not. I'm not too sure, but they obviously saw something. Like they 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 saw something, and after so after we did that, we did we then had um another group like there's group scenes that we that we did. So everyone came yeah. into the room. The man had been in one by one. Everyone came into the room, like read the scene as a group and then sang a bit. And then, yeah, so it was just very, I think it was quite rigorous, actually. I'd say it's one of the more rigorous like auditions that I'd had that, that, that I've had in a while, like, like in terms of what they were looking for, like, like and how, how specific the notes they were giving were and the amount of times people sang and the amount of times we did like the group thing. I was like, I came out of it, I was like, they worked us a bit in there, I'm not going to lie to you. But I understand why because we've we're we're open now. We've had a, we had our third preview on Saturday. Mm. And tomorrow we've got our fourth preview, so we're still you know we're still working the show and yeah. doing it. But yeah, to 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 say to you, it's been somewhat of a boot camp up until this point. That'd be an understatement. It's been it's been it's been work, man. It's been wow. it's been good. It's been good, but yeah, man, really like putting this show together, especially as it's a new cast where the creative team, they've done it before. We yeah. Done it Even though we've seen it, I'm approaching it like I haven't seen it. I'm approaching it like from ground, from ground zero. So yeah, yeah like cool. all of those, like all of that work, all of those discoveries that we're trying to find, it's, it's been, it's been interesting doing so. And I think also we know like what the play did beforehand. We understand how popular it was beforehand, and that's fine, that's good. But it comes to a point where you have to kind of disregard that and go that 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 doesn't matter now because yeah, it's a different I hear show. You. It's a different show, and big up the man and for what they did beforehand. But yeah. in order for us to tell the story in the best way and do our jobs to the best of our ability, we can't be thinking about what was before I have to think about what I'm trying to do now and that's what everyone has done that like, the cast the creatives like we've, we've had to lock in and really hold each other down to to, to get it together but um yeah yeah man that's amazing man you got your head screwed on I have one last question for you so like obviously being an actor landing roles is key like it's key for so many reasons it builds your career puts money in your pocket and this is what you're doing in it but um in addition to that right like landing jobs landing roles how important are the stories you tell in those roles like for you personally it's very important it's very important because I think if you, how can you tell a story that you don't really, like, believe in? Mm. You know, for me, personally, I think, I think you can have your, like, you can question things. I think that's perfectly natural. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, you can... You can have your doubts, but I think, or you can have your, 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 by doubts, I mean, you, 
there's so many actors that talk about, uh, you know, they, they offered me this role, but I turned it down because I just didn't think I was the right person to do it. And mm. I hear that. Like, I, I understand that. Or even... It's, I don't know, man. There's this thing people say, you have to climb the ladder to change the ladder, right? So sometimes it's, there's, there's, that, there's that mindset of, okay, where I am now, I may not be able to affect the change that I want to affect, but I need to get to a certain point and then I'll be able to do, put certain, like implement certain things. And it's not to say that I'm compromising myself, my morals on the way there, but it's just, I understand that I have to humble myself and do, put the groundwork in to get to a certain point. I think I when it comes to telling certain, like certain stories, if someone wants, if someone is like, if you're telling a story where you've got, I'm not sure I, I understand this fully, so let me educate myself on this before I go into mm. before I go into to read for this thing. And okay, I'm at a place now where I've got a bit more of I'm I'm uh, I'm getting to grips with it a bit more. Um, yeah, I, I understand that because that's what theatre is. There's people that are going to come and watch things that don't agree with it, but you know that that it's a conversation that's being had. But to, mm. long story short, to answer your question, yeah. I've been blessed that a lot of the a lot of the things that the jobs that I've done has been issues that or stories that I've spoken to me and mm. stories that have represented not just me but the people that I've grown up around the people that yeah just the people that are in my life and I think it it just makes me hold it a bit dearer to my heart but it it also it kind of has that added pressure because I know that if I do it if I if I don't do a good job then Forget about what people out there are gonna say. There's people that I speak to and talk to every day that are gonna be like, "What? What? The, what? What in the world was that?" Yeah, you know, you know yeah. what I mean. So it's yeah. like it, it helps to keep you accountable. But just on a basic level, it's like as an as an actor, as an artist, our voice is powerful. Mm. When you get to a certain level, your platform becomes powerful. Life imitates art. Art imitates life. So it's like a lot of these stories that we're talking about, it's not just entertainment, it's it's real. So, you know, with what's going on in the world right now, I feel like if there is if there is ever a time to, if you're going to do work, you better believe in it. Like, you better, you know what I mean? <laughs> you better. If you're going to say them lines on the stage, you need to say them with your chest because it's, it's quite, we're blessed, but it is quite dire out there right now. And I think it's things like, art and it's things like what we do that can help to change that affect some sort of change so yeah i think it's very important i believe that it's important to to i believe that it's important to do stories that you that that you believe in and sometimes doing that project is the thing that will test that it, mm. and yeah that is a journey in itself I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Thank you, man. Thank you. Bro, I hope everything goes well. I know it will. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see what you do next, man. Because, yeah, this is only the beginning. I, as I said, bro, one day at a time, I just focus on, you know, what I've got in front of me. So right now, with this, this play, trying to... Yeah you know, to do do the best that we can with that and yeah, whatever comes next we'll see. But yeah, I'm 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 excited as well.